Alright, we have a Viego versus Udyr in a diamond game. Let's take a look. So we have a Raptor Stern, okay. Oh shit, okay. Um, so if you have a full clearing on Viego, it's two points Q is faster. And normally, ra starting Raptors is just worse than starting mid buff on Viego. But definitely, if you're doing anything, like you're full clearing ever, you need two points in Q. Yeah, when I scaled E there, I kind of was like, I should have just did Q. Because I knew I wasn't going to. I knew I was full clearing. I just yeah. instant Eden. Uh, so this is timing, timing 101, um, and camera control 101. So, starting off, camera control. We're not even looking at the fight. We have no clue what's happening. No clue. Right right here, we see something, and right now we have no idea what spells are using. We have no idea if someone's getting CC'd, if someone's running away, if someone's going in. We have no info. And we don't get any info. Here's where we start getting info at the edge of our screen. It's really hard to see. So this entire time, five seconds ago, we want to be watching the fight as we're clicking. Okay? Get information. Timing, okay? If you were watching and getting correct proper information, you would see that the enemy Gwen is backing off the entire time from the Cassante. If Gwen is backing off from the Cassante and you come in, what's going to happen is you guys are going to meet, like you did, all the way up here where Gwen's tower is. Because Ash is clicking away, you're clicking forward, you'll never meet her. But if you catch her at a time where she clicks forward, and then you go here, now you guys will meet her around here because she has to turn back around. So, if you were watching the fight and collecting information properly, you'd be able to see this. But because you're not looking at the, the actual fight, you don't know what's going on. You also don't know what spells she used. You also don't know what spells your Kasanta used. Right now, she doesn't know you're there. Okay? This, if this is awarded, you get spotted from here. You sit here, you watch the fight, you wait. The moment Gwen goes in, you go forward. Make sense? Yeah. So, get information, think about timing, and use Fog of War. To look at it closely here, what does Gwen try to play for by being this far forward? Wave crash, mm -hmm. I was thinking. So when she's actually crashing the wave is the timing you want to go in. When she's trying to kill these three minions is when you want to go in. No time earlier. No time later. When she goes for those minions. When she's stepping up, going forward, take those minions. That's what actual ganking looks like. Versus we get this shenanigans and we're just like trying to dive them essentially where again we meet all the way back here and it's like okay even if you land at W you're chunking her to a little bit of HP and now this entire point has just been terrible okay and again a similar thing is okay we're here watching the fight watching the fight a, a little bit but we need to see what Cassante is doing okay luckily you get a little more info which is good and this should, should look a lot prettier at least this looks pretty chill okay it's good get get the wave in with this guy it's also good and we instead stay on the map here and run to our Ari Okay, now we'll talk about Tempo 101. Well, you spent so much time in the top side, so much time, that it's already 4.43. When does your first camp respawn? Four around 4.20. Yeah. But since I did Raptors, it's going to spawn sooner. Yeah. So, because you actually did Raptors, it's very likely that Udyr actually already ate them. Funny enough. Right, which is why, especially against full clear junglers, you never want to set Raptors... Because unless you're going to be there for sure to stop them, you don't want to serve Raptors. Okay, but just thinking about tempo, you want to go back to your Krugs, you want to go back to your Raptors, you want to go back to your camps, so you can regank top lane. The longer you spend on the map, the slower you are to make a play top lane, which is your win con now, because you just played and won top side. So don't look at it as we're recalling because like we're not making enough plays or like oh, we're, I'm wasting time on the map by recalling. Look at it as the faster you get your camps off the map, the faster you can make a really good play with your strong teammates that you're playing with. 
to add on that, it's not just your top laner that's winning. It seems your mid laner is doing pretty good, and it seems your bot laner is doing pretty good. The score is 4-0 to zero right now. So the faster you clear your camps, period, the faster you'll be able to do dragon, kill bot, kill mid, kill top. Now you should make a choice on which lane you want to play with. So tempo matters, right? That's tempo 101. But now we'll get into playing to a win con 101. Okay? You cannot gank bot, mid, and top and expect to win, essentially. Um, it's much harder to work with three lanes than it is to work with one. So if you had points you can give to people, and you were to score people, and you only had 10 points to give, right? Because you're juggling, you, need, you, have, you have the remaining 10 for yourself. And you distributed them 3.3 for every single lane, that's how strong they'll be. And, you know, if, if everyone's like relatively strong and not extremely strong, that leaves a lot of room for them to outplay you. A lot of room. But if you have this guy who's going to be at three items versus two items, you're going to be insanely strong. You, you know, the, the fight's going to be fucking 1v9 because you put all of your 10 imaginary points into this guy. Now, you can split it 5 and 5 and put it into two people. So that's how you put it into your top laner and your mid laner. That's valid, I'd say. But the moment you start p playing with your ADC as well, oh shit, now we, now we, spread, it, we spread it way too thin. The general rule is to have one lane that you're playing with. One. And if you play to gang top lane like this, you stick to playing to top lane. At the max, you play to bot lane. Or mid lane. Not both. Or. So, max two lanes. Ideal is one. To play with. So you're not ganking everywhere. Because you still want to work with yourself. You still need to get strong for jungle. What about jungle? Jungle needs to get strong. How do we get strong in our jungle? We need to farm. So we need to spend that time farming. <clears throat> so the equivalent of a jungler ganking out all three lanes at all times and skipping camps is the equivalent of a laner dropping two to three waves to make a play somewhere. Let's say your mid laner. Just decides, I'm going to leave mid. And go make a play. And let's say they, they get a kill. One kill. Awesome. But what do they drop? They drop three waves mid lane. Two, two or three waves. Two to three. And then let's say the next time they make a play top lane. They get one kill. Awesome. And let's say they make a play clear. But every time they're doing this, they're dropping things. Two or three waves, two or three waves. Maybe, maybe it's one to two even. And then it doesn't be that bad. That's the equivalent of if you play to gank, play to gank, play to gank, play to gank, it's not going to be a pretty game for you. Okay? So these are pretty much baseline fundamental rules I've implemented into my own gameplay that I'm trying to, educate, trying to teach you. So when you play, you have a baseline structure you can apply to the game. So if I were to map out what my baseline looks like in a game like this, I have Raptors, Krugs, Red, Wolves, Gromp, Blue. Okay, and then I'm going to do crab, and then no matter what here, I have an input that needs to be tempo. Recall. The moment you scratch this tempo off, okay, and you start getting mid, do extra extra time on crab, or actually it was it's, it's more like this, it's more like this, it's more like gank top, regank top, crab, gank mid, do extra like like at the moment you start doing this, where do we get tempo? It comes too late. Our baseline is always going to be... Unfortunately, it, it got kind of ruined. Our baseline is always going to be, we need a tempo somewhere. In, in that, in that flowchart. So, every time in a sequence, you can map it out very easily. Our next sequence is going to be Krubs, Raptors, Wolves, Gromp, Recall. That's our baseline. That's it. That's how simple it gets. And then our next sequence is going to be Krugs, Red... Raptors, Wolves, you get the whole idea, right? Gromp, Blue, yeah. Recall. This is the equivalent of a laner farming minion waves. That's 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 how like complex yet not complex jungling is. It's a formula, it's a function. Okay, and it's really easy for jungle for laners because they have to last hit minions. So awesome, good jobs. You have to last hit minions, you have to understand some wave states. Okay, you can do that. 
Now, for a jungler, what it, what it takes is you need to be able to input a function here, which is gank a lane or do an objective. You need to be able to input a function here, which is, which is gank top, gank mid, gank bot, do objective. You need to make choices. But your baseline is still the rest of this. But because you gank a lane, you need you have to remove these two. You still have recall here. That's how jungling works. That's that's how easy it can feel. Cool. So when we stay on the map right here, and we do the crab, and we're looking to maybe help mid lane, and we recall. Now our our entire game is like pretty much the fur the, the slower you are at completing your flow charts the slower you'll hit item spikes and the slower impact you have on the map. So let's say we recalled right at 4, uh, 440, like, I mean, 442, 442. Do you know how long it takes to go uh, a recall and come come to your first camp? How much, t how many seconds? 25? Yeah, roughly 25, I'd say like 30. Just, we'll just give a good estimate of 30 seconds. All right, so at five, uh, at 512, you're gonna be on your first camp, right, clearing it. Let's say it takes 15 seconds each camp. We're gonna take another 30 seconds. At 5:42, you have a time to make a play. Gank mid, gank bots, gank um, do do the objective, okay? But we recall at 5:01. So we'll just skip 5:02. So we've added an extra 20 seconds to this timer. Now the next time you make a play is at 6:02. That's the damage you've done to your flow chart. And, not to mention, our general recall is now going to be at 532 instead of 512. Can map that out a little better. So, when we come to our first camp, sometimes you break off of Crux, right? But you have 20 seconds less of a decision where if you were dared balling 20 seconds faster, could you have made a play? Could you have won the game? Could you have counter -ganked? Could you have pulled Dragon? Could you have done this? But you can't. You don't even have the option to because you stayed on the map for crap. So, try and look at tempo as a idea of matching your flowchart, your baseline, and sticking with it. And if there's good plays like this counter gank, the, the, the secondary gank top lane, this regank top lane, which is a great play, it was good. Then you still can't do the crab and do ten camps, and then recall. It takes too much time. And again, the goal is to return to top lane. The faster you do Krugs, the faster you do Raptors, the faster you recall, the faster you can make another really good play top lane. Awesome. Any questions? Oh, so uh, can you go back to after I gank? Uh, oh yeah, I guess like right here after we push in. Uh huh. And then right when I so like yeah, basically right here because like I was gonna recall. That was my first instinct, but then I saw him gank, and then I was like, okay, maybe I can help. But then I did look, and I was like, well, she looked kind of fine. But then I was like, well, I am 50 gold off of uh, Noon Quiver. So I was like, I can just stay and do um, Crab. So, but would you say it's just better to base and then like sit in base for the gold or just base and buy like two long swords or something? Base and buy two long swords. Okay. Two long swords and a dagger. That's also why you don't buy potion, especially against a full clear jungler. This potion is really useless. Yeah, I mean, I did, yeah. <laughs> I so you'd have it anyway, but yeah, yeah. okay, if you don't have it, it's fine. Like that new quiver is not going to change the fact of whether you kill this Gwen top lane or not. True. What's going to kill the like? What's going to change is if you're actually going to be top lane or not. And if you spend twenty extra seconds to do this crab, that will change whether or not you can kill top lane. Yeah. That's what matters more. Okay, let's say this is a completed item, like Kraken Slayer, for example. Over tempo all you want, man. I don't care. It's really good for the game. That, that's the difference. A Noon Quiver, it doesn't matter, man. A Pickaxe and a Longsword actually does like literally the exact same amount of damage as Noon Quiver. I've done I've done the math in practice still plenty of times. It's a feels good on Viago for sure, but it actually does the same. Any other questions? Oh, uh, and then uh, the my you can just skip to like the last forty minutes because it was like a long game, but like the build, I just wanted. To... Did should I have built something else? I mean, it felt good in the game, but like the end build was like Kraken, Trinity Force, Whitsend, and I think or Sterics. And 
plated um, boots. I'd recommend just replace this with Sundered Sky or Titanic Hydra. Okay. That's it. Um, with the new Sundered Sky changes, it might be just Titanic Hydra second, no matter what. This okay. just doesn't provide like nearly enough HP, or it just like the sheen is like not necessarily that good. I mean, it's fine. It's definitely not the end of the world, um, especially in this game where you have a tank. Honestly, your build is good. Your build is fine. I have no real complaints. Um, but I just I'm a, I'm re I have a recent Trinity Force hater. So, uh, but if you like what you like, and this is what again I I I try to emphasize, it's better to be consistent than it is to be. Um, you know, building random items every game. So if you really like Trinity Force and you know how to play it on Trinity Force, buy it every game. It's completely fine. So if you really like Kraken over Bork, buy it. If you really like Bork over Kraken, buy it. Doesn't matter. You don't. You don't want to change things too frequently. It makes things really hard to get good. It makes it really hard to get good. So. I got you. I got you. All right, man. But yeah, that's it. That's basically it. Cool. Well, if you guys enjoyed that, I pretty much okay, host the um... Patreon video every single um. Uh, week a, a session and you know if you guys want more of this uh, my discord is down below and yeah I'll see you guys around bye bye